At this camp in Anchorage's Mountain View neighborhood, being homeless doesn't stop people from living their lives. Some, like Caesar Carberry, are even running a business. So the name of the business is uh, A1 Neverboard. You're never bored if you know you're on a skateboard. It takes about a day, to tell you the truth. Carberry sands down the boards, paints new designs, and adds trucks and wheels. Skateboards are the complete is like forty dollars, you know. And uh, I've sold a, I've sold a, uh, a lot, even to the employees at Holiday. It's enough to buy food and pay his cell phone bills some of the time. And it's also the reason why he's not staying in a shelter, where a personal space is limited to a plastic tote. But there are advantages to staying in a shelter. Staff is fabulous. Security's good. They feed us, they house us, they close us. You know, everything we need, our, our needs are met. It's been good. Best experience of my life, actually. The Sullivan Arena Shelter is the city's largest, sleeping close to its capacity of 400 guests each night. There's laundry, warm meals and hot showers, and service providers to help get clients on their feet. 65% of people um, are out of shelter within 30 days, and that's a pretty astounding number. Shelter operators and Anchorage's politicians say it's the first step out of homelessness. Lisa Souter directs Beans Cafe, which operates the Sullivan Shelter. I personally don't want to see anybody in a camp. Um, I know more bad things that have happened to people in camps than have ever happened in any shelter. But there are rules, curfews, and a lot of people in one place. Camper El Shaniqua Durfee says being in a shelter can feel demeaning. If I'm an adult, I don't think I should have an 11 o'clock curfew to be inside of a building because this person is drunk or this person has mental health issues. I'm supposed to just kind of be quiet and let them react or behave however they'd like to. Um, so I'm not really good with getting along with people. After 10 years of living in tents, Durfee says she prefers camping to indoor life, even if it sometimes means threats of violence. The solitude of her tent and the beauty of the outdoors calms her mind. When the fall hits, all these trees change all different colors, and, and it's just quiet enough to where at night, that highway sounds like an ocean. An added challenge to campers is the city's abatement program. Every few weeks or months, city workers post signs telling campers to pack up and leave. It costs the city hundreds of thousands of dollars each year, but they say it's for the health of campers. To campers, though, it feels like eviction. Every single time that we get abated, there's more and more people that have to, because of a lack of place to put it or because of the lack of assistance or the moving back and forth, they lose more and more. Some campers like Alan Levant Jefferson see a third option, a city-sanctioned campsite. As part of a loose group of advocates who have experienced homelessness, they propose converting an East Anchorage park, adding security and cleanliness requirements. As a solution-oriented community, we would do all the cleaning, bag up all the trash, take it and put it in a designated area where we could meet and greet other people who are having the same problem. The idea is not popular among Anchorage policymakers who say shelters are the best way to keep people safe and to reduce neighborhood blight. But both campers and politicians agree that the ultimate solution is just more real housing. i just like to let the citizens know that we're not here to send their property value down. We're merely trying to survive. These campers say they're ready to put in the work as long as the politicians put in theirs. Reporting in Anchorage, I'm Lex Trinan.